All right, welcome back to another day trading recap video for Friday, April 8th. Today, I'm up a measly $1.65. Uh, took had one huge well, percentage, huge percentage loss on BWV, uh, small size, thank God. And uh, kind of just scalped my way back to break even. Uh, my setup really did not show itself today. And... If you guys um, want to try, um, definitely put um, hot chocolate Swiss Miss uh, mix, hot chocolate mix of Swiss Miss into your coffee. It makes it like super, super amazing. It's like hot chocolate and then also makes you feel super like awake and I don't know, it usually gets me going. Um, also have a cool mug here. Perfect for trading. It always seems impossible until it's done. This is my favorite mug. But anyways, my setup really did not show itself today and I was a little bit in, um, care more careful today after what happened yesterday, just like the lack of momentum in the market. And I just, I don't know. I just, I wasn't at the right place at the right time yesterday and I just had kept having back to back to back to back losses um, today you know I came into the market a little bit more conservative a little bit more patient I wanted to see something prove itself and have a solid front side before and breaking new highs before I started getting aggressive on it and the best I guess the best stock of the day was MDVL and to be honest with you it it wasn't even all that good to I mean it was okay, but it wasn't like something that was consistently in my wheelhouse and setting up. Uh, I had a higher higher float. The float was around 70 million shares. And, you know, it was still really, really choppy. Um, so let's just go over my trades today. I traded four different stocks. Let's just go over my trades. Uh... So here I'm going to pull this up. I just want to see what I traded here first. So at 8 to 12, we got ATER. So I traded ATER first. Had a solid, you know, scalp on it, pre-market. And, you know, I started up small green. I was scalping it through $5. Went in $500 position size and scalped it for a couple cents. Up a small gain on that one. Quick scalp. Then I traded BWV at the open. I didn't trade after this at 8.15. I didn't trade the rest of the morning. Just nothing was showing up. And I was watching BFRI, um, thinking maybe, you know, is this what we would have that continuation after that retest of the VWAP, hold of the VWAP, run higher. And that's what I was really watching, and it just kept chopping around, going sideways, and I just, you know, I didn't trade the rest of the morning. That was the only trade I had for two and a half hours, uh, that one trade on ATER. But at the open, I traded VWV, which I was, I don't know what I was thinking. See, in a market like this, maybe a week ago or two weeks ago, this, you know, would have just kept going to 15, to 16, to 17, to 18, to 19, to 20. And, you know, I was just still in that mindset of a couple weeks ago or even just a couple days ago when I had that $100 day. Um, it just the market really shifted overnight for me. At least that's how I feel. And, uh, you know, something like this would keep going. And it was actually stuck in a halt. And then at the last second, right before it was about to halt, it false halted. All those buyers got pulled or sold into, and it just sold off 10%. We had one couple seconds where you could sell early here, but I was thinking maybe sometimes what happens is like there's a false halt. It pulls back just a little bit, and then it runs that next leg up. And that's what I was thinking. So I was sizing in under 14, looking for that breakout, and I was holding longer than I really should have. And like I remember seeing... You know, some weakness, you know, maybe I should have just taken it off until we saw that rip through 14 and up towards the new high of uh, of, of the day at 1475. <coughs> because it really didn't 
break this pivot point. The pivot point was at 430, 4, yeah, 430. And so in reality here, it's still sort of backwards trending, down trending. Um, I really needed to see a break of this pivot point for it to be a potential front side rally. Um, and especially after this huge sell-off. Wow, this is insane. I've never seen anything like this. Um, so I was thinking, you know, we could see that rally to 20, 25. And I was getting super aggressive. I was getting excited. And thank God it was only 10 shares. My sell was all the way at the bottom at 1250. All the way. I just hit hit the market, sell market, because... You know, I just didn't want to have anything to do with it after this sell-off. I don't care if I got a bad fill. I just wanted to get the hell out of this position. And I ended up realizing a $15 loss on a $100 position size. So that's more like 11 or 12% loss on one trade. Thank God it was small size. That's all I'm, that's all I'm grateful for. Um, and so, yeah, that put me down maybe $8 on the day. And then ATER, I traded again. There was nothing, what you're going to see uh, today is like there was nothing really I could just size into and trust the bulls to, you know, hold support, come down, test support, and rally up through the resistance. And while I'm adding off support and adding and adding and adding up until the resistance point where it's at that retesting that high and I'm adding through the burst through the high and it skips 10, 20 cents and I'm selling off into the extension. You know, I just did not have that today. And that's what I was looking for. And it didn't really show up. So that's why a lot of these trades here are scalps. I, 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 add, I, I take my starter position and then I take it off right away just because, you know, I'll, they're just so shaky and it's just, I just don't feel trusting of the bulls or any support levels. Um, so here we had a red to green move. I was adding on a pullback to the 9 EMA. And you see just like this, as soon as it was testing that VWAP level, I was taking it off because you know what? There was a huge chance that we were going to reject this VWAP. And this would happen to me a couple times <coughs> since it's still, you know, kind of, if you look at the, at this chart, it's still like in a range and a backside. You don't know if it's just going to reject and then just do a 10, 5% move down. Could easily do that since it's, you know, you still get this descending <clears throat> line here. Even though it did break this, there still, you know, could be a lot of resistance at the VWAP. And so, like, I just didn't want to take that risk uh, because it wasn't breaking new highs. The only way I would be adding and holding for longer periods of time if it was for the test of the $5 level, 507, booking for 550, $6, you know, really opening up in the front side. Uh, but for this, something like this, you know, I just want to take my profit as soon as I have it because look, if I would have held here, I would have potentially maybe got an extra 10 cents, five or 10 cents. And if I wanted to buy off, add again off the VWAP for another move, you know, I would have just been stuck in a 5% drop without having any chance to get out for a break even. So those are the kind of the moves that I'm trying to avoid. And the way for me to avoid those is, is if I'm trading a range or a backside move, I need to take my profits as soon as possible. Unless we're in a super hot market and I can feel the momentum on these stocks and you get like a fresh catalyst in the low float, then, you know, if stocks are ripping back up to the high in one, two, three candles, then, yeah, I would add here on the red to green, hold for, you know, a decent push to the front, to the, like a, to a potential retest of the high, and then adding on a micro pullback uh, before the breakthrough $5 and adding up through the breakout level. And that's something, you know, I would be, trading if I felt like the momentum was there in the market, but we haven't had anything like that today. Um, so I was really reluctant to do that. Uh, and in this case, you know, I would, I would add here on the red to green and kind of let it prove itself a little bit on my starter size, maybe a little bit more than a starter size. Let it prove itself, see how much volume is coming in, 
see the watch the tape, see what the buyers and sellers are doing, uh, looking at the active trader ladder, and then waiting for a micro pullback, sizing it a little bit more, uh, and then waiting for that continuation move. But here today, I don't want to have a day like that because you know any move that I was going to do that with would have a five percent drop here, five percent drop there. It sold off there, had a false breakout. Um, and same with MDVL, very, very choppy. Uh, so really stayed away from that, just you know, taking quick scalps. I really could have walked away just without any trades today. Um, but that was ATER. And then we traded MDVL, which was the best stock of the day, in my opinion. Right here, you know, this... If my mind was shifted from a momentum, you know, adding into a front side uh, strategy to a bottom bounce strategy, uh, this would have been a great setup here off the support level. Putting in a stop right under 74, maybe a stop around 70 or 69, adding into this flush at the open, and then looking for that red to green move off, because we had a lot of support here. We had a gap up overnight. We had a multi-day continuation run, and there's just a lot of volume on this ticker. And you can tell that there's support here because it bounced off already twice, um, and it did not break down below 160. And so it was still in like that multi-day front side move, and adding off the support, this would have been a great risk to reward ratio. But my mind was not shifted into that kind of setup because the past two, three, four weeks, I was very successful in adding into breakouts, adding into the highs, looking for that next leg, adding into a micro pullback and another pop to the upside, and you know being very aggressive on those types of moves. But the past two days, those moves have been actually making me lose money. I they haven't been working for me. And you know, really, if I would have shifted my mindset and you know thought ahead today, this would have been a really good move. Uh, and you can see I kind of got into late at the party after the break of two dollars. But yeah, right here was the money move. If you could have gotten onto this, uh, this lower, the higher low here on low selling volume, um, you could have got even even if you would have sold at the break of view up, you could have had a seven to ten percent move, and that would have that would have just made your day. And if you could have got this micro pullback, that could have just been another ad. Um, to your gains on the day. So here I was a little bit late to the party. Uh, I was adding after the break of $2. I think I just FOMO'd into this. There wasn't really a pullback. Oh no, I was looking for the breakout of 206 since this was the previous high, kind of like a pivot point. And so I added there, kind of took a scalp off for a couple cent gain, holding still 50 shares and added back again on the pullback, looking for a pop. Uh, sold kind of early, to be honest with you. Um, it sold almost at break even. Uh, then here, you know, I kind of FOMO'd this into then. I missed 20 cents here, and then I FOMO'd into at 226, looking for a break of the high, and it completely stalled out, double topped here, and uh, pulled back, kind of consolidated for a while. I thought it was just going to be done. I just, you know, I was really looking for that move almost within the next few minutes through the high. And we just didn't get that. It just kept going sideways, getting stuffed around this level. There's a lot of sellers I was seeing on the tape and on the level two. And, you know, I kind of got chopped around a bit, but I was still able to get a little bit green on this ticker. Um, here you can see I was kind of adding higher, 27, looking for that move past 45. Um, and I took it off for a small gain, added back on a dip. Looking for that move, adding on a dip, and then added again off the 90 EMA, thinking this would be finally it. And then it just kept having false breakouts until eventually you had this red to green move, which really caught shorts off guard. And this would have been a nice pop. That was a 11% move right there if you could have got into that, but I didn't even see it until it already happened. Uh, then here I was looking for a break of 50, kind of scalped it for a cent, a cent and a half. And then here I was scalping for a potential continuation move through 260. And um, it kind of just had a little false break out there. I thought this candle would be like the start of another leg higher. So I was adding. 
and uh, had a false breakout there. Then here I was adding again off the 9 EMA uh, for that move back to the high potentially and find some continuation. But, um, you know, I'm, I'm in that mindset of breakout or bailout. And if it wasn't going to go there, and I was just looking at the tape. There was a lot of sellers who were struggling to, to push any higher. And I was just, you know, kind of managing my risk and taking some size off uh, as it wasn't going to work over time. Uh, but I would have definitely, you know, if I would have took off my position here and I would have saw it run up to the high, I would definitely add back. I would ne never hesitate to add back, but I just, I'm in that mindset of, you know, I wanted to break out within the next few minutes and I do not want to be holding through a consolidation, especially in this market, because it seems like the momentum is just dries out really quick. So that was it on MDVL. Then we had, uh, I went over BFR, no, I had BFRI. <coughs> so BFRI is the other ticker. Also a really good red to green move off the support level. Um, but, you know, I, the volume was kind of weak, so I thought that was just going to kind of break through and just sell off. But um, I didn't get into it until the pullback under the VWAP here at 490. Oh no, the breakthrough VWAP. And looking for that move. Um, past this pivot point of $5. I was looking for a break of $5. And it just wasn't happening. So I took it off for a scratch. Then it finally ripped up. I don't know why I just missed it. I just didn't even decide to trade this. I think just because of all these topping tails that just kind of spooked me. And um, so here, I had a pullback here to the 9 EMA, tried to add a little bit. Um, and I kind of scalped it for a couple cents, very small size, because it's still not really break. I want something breaking new highs. And so I was still really reluctant to trade this, because it still had a lot of room to run, uh, a lot of room to go until it was breaking new highs and for me to get really aggressive. I didn't want to get aggressive unless I broke over 550 and kind of pushing 580, but we never got that. Maybe we'll get it during power hour, but right now it's not happening. Here we had a nice high volume candle with a red to green move through the break of 528, 530. So I was adding and I was looking for that move for that extension on high volume and then it just this candle kind of pulled back and kind of had a little false breakout and it kind of spooked me a little bit and I sold early and there was a kind of a small loss there. So really kind of all over the place today. Nothing I was really confident in and sizing into and holding for uh, and an ad breakthrough resistance or like a new high. I think the best ticker was MDVL and you know if you would have had that mindset of this bottom bounce here, this would be an amazing move. And you know, I always, I like to trade these setups. Uh, and I was trading a lot of these setups a couple months ago. Um, but I was just in such of the mindset of, you know, only trading the front side that I completely overlooked this setup here and this bottom bounce because bottom bounces um, really do have a great risk reward ratio. And you know, when you're not, you're in a market that stocks aren't having solid front sides uh, like the past two days um, running you know 50 100 150 percent front sides um, these are the kind of setups that are going to make you some really good money uh, because then you can you know buy off the support and, and just sell you know on that mean reversion or at least you know if you could have held for the break of the VWAP eight percent or if you were to have been confident enough to hold to at least two dollars and thirteen cents to this pivot point. Even if you were very conservative on it, you could have made eight to ten percent on your money uh, off this very slow risk setup. And so, yeah. So maybe next week I'm gonna on Monday I'm gonna assess the momentum in the market, and we'll see. You know, I'll definitely keep my eyes open for. A support bounce or a bottom bounce on um, any gapping tickers on especially on multi-day continuation those are offer really good setup and especially if it's very high volume um, so that's my plan moving forward today kind of a scratch day um, but you know it's better than being red 
and there wasn't really, there was no setup that really fit my criteria, and I'm completely okay with not taking a trade today because um, that's just part of being a successful trader is by only taking trades when the setup is there. And today, just it just wasn't there. And, you know, I wasn't really, you know, on my game as well um, because I completely overlooked a great setup here at the open. That was probably, the, this is probably the best setup of the day. Uh, I ran 40% 40, 40 front side from the bottom to the top. So, all right, well, that's it for me. Uh, okay, so I'll catch you guys on the next trading recap next week. You guys are still trading today. Um, definitely uh, manage your risk and be safe. And I'll see you guys uh, on the next trading recap. Peace.